So we have a confidence interval problem here. Uh, one of the key things to see is the type of confidence or the level of confidence we're going after and how that connects with the rest of the problem. So here we have a 90% confidence interval. Um, and if we go to our table, we need to find the critical value here. So let's go to our T table. Um, because we're dealing with confidence intervals, we're kind of centering where we estimate the mean will be, which means we could be off in the left tail, we could be off in the right tail. Uh, so we really want to get the area in two tails here. Uh, the area in two tails should be um, 1 minus this level. So 1 minus 0 0.90 would be 0 0.1. And then we need degrees of freedom, which uh, would be one less than the sample size. So we have 14 here. That would give us 1.771 for our critical value. And we'll type that in real quickly here. And then we want to remember that because that's then important in the calculation of the confidence interval of the, these lower and upper endpoints. So our best guess at the population mean is always the sample mean. So that's the starting place of the equation. And, and of course, you can just use the equation for this. Um, but this does tell you a little bit about why, why the equation is that way. So the best guess at the population mean is the 55.95. But we know we, we may be plus or minus a little bit. And it turns out, it turns out we want to go um, 1.771, that was the critical value we just found, times um, the, where are we here, the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So let's calculate that. So let's find here 18.89 divided by the square root of 14. Uh, let's type that in as 14 square root, and this would give us um, our standard error. Okay, and we want to go 1.771 of these in each direction from the sample mean. So our best guess uh, could be plus or minus this amount in order to get us a 90% confidence interval. So 894 is the, the um, amount we're looking at there as our error margin. And we have 47.01. And then we'll just do the same thing again with plus. So we'll go 55.95. Uh, 55.95 plus 894, and that'll give us 64.89, and we'll submit that answer. So I think the most important thing here is to be able to interpret this then. <clears throat> We're really trying to get the average repair cost for VCRs and assume that it's, it's roughly normal. We're 90% confident, based on a sample, if it's truly randomly selected, we're 90% confident that that average repair cost in general, not just for these 14, but for the entire population that these came from, is somewhere between $47.01 and $64.89.